All right, so we've uh, looked at doing uh, what do we do a little bit about templating, and then we did a string to HTML kind of a deal, and uh, now we're going to look at parsing and executing templates. And so um, let's just uh, take a look at this file. So now we have a package template, and template has parse files. And it's going to return a file, and then we can execute that, and we'll execute it to standard out. And so now what we're doing is we're taking our text and we're putting it in another file. So here I put text in another file. It's going to grab this text and read it. And so it'll read it, and then it will put it into another file and execute it to somewhere. We're going to send it to standard out. But if we look at these functions, we have uh, parse files, and that takes in a file name, so any name, and it's going to re return a pointer to a template and an error. And so when we see parse files, it takes in a file name, any name, so there's the file name. We're passing that in. That's our thing that we're going to parse. And uh, it'll return a template, and then we're going to execute that template. So a template is kind of like um, a place where uh, a template's a place where we store files that have been parsed that we want to use. And so we have text template. We have this package text template. And if we look at that, it's a package that's been written to help us I'm just looking why I have two of these things open. It's a package that's been written to help us do templating. So we have text forward slash template and so here's this package. And then we're also going to have godoc.org uh, forward slash HTML forward slash template. So we have text template. We have HTML template. So we'll be using HTML templating to help us with templating. But first we're going to learn about text template. And the reason we're going to learn about text template first is because HTML template is everything that text template is, but with some extra stuff added on to, to work well in an HTML environment. And so what we're learning about here is text templating. And from package template, and this is text template, from package template we have parse files. And so if we look at this index and we look for parse files, parse files, parse files, parse files, boom, there we go. We have uh, under type template, takes in a file name, it's an unlimited number of values of type string, so it could take in many file names and it's going to return a pointer to a template and an error. So parse files, creates a new template and parses the template definitions from the named files. The return template's name will have the base name and parse contents of the first file. There must be at least one file. If an error occurs, parsing stops and the return template is nil. It's nothing. When parsing mul multiple files with the same name in different directories, the last one mentioned will be the one result. So there's just a little bit of information about this other stuff. So let's just see how it works and then we'll get a feel for it. So I'm going to start my terminal and cd to uh, go source github goes to 11 golang web dev and we are in 004 01 all right so what happened was, here I have that text. That text is called template.goHTML. Here I've said template.parsefiles, and I've passed in template.goHTML. That gave me a template. I think of a template, right? It returned pointer to a template. I think of a type pointer to a template as a bucket that holds all these files I want to work with. Your website will have a bunch of different templates. You will parse them all with parse files. 
and they will be put into this bucket that holds all those files and makes them accessible. Now I'm doing template execute and I'm executing that template to standard out and execute takes in a writer and any data. I'm not passing in any data. right? So once I have a pointer to a template from this package long way down to the index. Once I have a pointer to a template, I have all these methods. And one of the methods is execute. I'm going to execute to some place I could write to, something that implements the writer interface. And I, I could pass in data if I want, and it'll return an error. I could also execute template to a writer, specify the name of the template, and pass in data, and it'll return an error. Let's play with that for a minute. Yeah. So we have, where am I at? 63, 31. So it's 63, create a new folder, and it'll be 32. 032 text, temp, lit. I'm going to close these, and then I'm going to go new, oop, new, go file, main, 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 and uh, I'm going to create a couple of files here. So new file, and it should just be one.txt, and hello, this is file one. And then two dot txt. Hello, this is file uh, data. So there are my two files. And now I'm going to go to here and how do I parse those and get them ready to use? I go template dot parse files and that brought it in from HTML. I want it from text. Text template. And parse files is going to take in file names one dot txt two dot txt and it returns a template just like uh, I think of it as a bucket that holds all my templates I'm just gonna make sure that template returns a template and an error and takes in file names and then if error is not equal to nil I'm gonna do log.fatal shut my program down and whoops error and now that I have template, I could execute. I'm going to execute or execute and specify it. This one, I just it executes the first one that's available, meaning first one put in. I think that's how it works, first in, first out. Or this one is going to be, uh, I can name the template and say where I want it to go to. So uh, I'm going to do that one. So I'm going to execute template. I'm going to do it to OS standard out. And I'm going to execute one.txt, and I'm not going to pass in any data. And now I'm going to execute two.txt, and I'm going to pass in James. And uh, and I'm going to change this one. And add that in. And so you'll create your pages. And then to get them all ready to use, you're going to say, okay, let's load all these kind of into memory and have them ready to use. It's kind of like setting up your program. So you're going to parse all those files. To parse a file means that, hey, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to parse it. I'm going to read it. So your computer is going to go through, the program is going to go through and read these files. 
get them ready to use, put them in TPL or whatever I name the variable. I think of it as just a bucket that holds all my templates that have been parsed. And then I could go through and I could choose to execute them at various points in the program. And so now let's see what happens. And I need to go into going web dev and da da da. And then I think it's what? Uh, 63 and 0, 032. And then go run main. Hello, this is file one. Hello, this is file two. And my name is James. So just to make this a little bit more readable. I'll put a new line in front of that. <coughs> Those are just new lines. I'll take out this last one here. All right. And I want to finish off of There we go. This is file 1, this is file 2, and my name is James. How many people think, "Wow, that's kind of cool?" I think that's kind of cool. All right. So, um I'm going to because of time, I want to show you some more stuff tonight. So you've got this code, and I'm going to push it up, and uh, and then you can uh, you can look at this. But I'm going to give you assignments so you could do these over the week. All right, and then we'll just keep moving.